Recently, government has banned 27 pesticides based on Pesticide Management Bill 2020. Let us see the basis of the new bill and the impact of banning of 27 pesticides and things that should be considered critically before the bill becomes law. I am Vignesh. Let's get into the topic. Pesticide Management Bill 2020 was approved by the Union Cabinet in February 2020. The bill will replace the Insecticide Act 1968 that currently regulates pesticide use in the country. The reason behind this new bill is the Insecticide Act 1968 is 50 years old which need to be updated as it was lacking sufficient deterrence against violation and no strict penalty to safeguard farmers interest and there is also no mechanism to regulate pricing and disposal in an environmentally sound manner. These included major areas like manufacture, import, packaging, labeling, pricing and storage of the pesticides and most importantly the disposal in order to ensure availability of safe and effectivity of the pesticides. The purpose of the bill is to minimize risk to human beings and the living organisms other than the pest and the environment with an attempt to promote pesticides that are biological and based on traditional knowledge. These are really for the good cause and must be done anyway. But there are few things that need to be considered and rectified and also some aspects mentioned in the bill needs to be strengthened before it becomes law. Otherwise, it could potentially weaken the bill. Let us begin with the regulation of advertisement and promotion. Pesticides continue to be advertised and promoted like consumer products despite being a deadly chemicals. They are advertised through multiple media and targeted at farmers who are often unaware of marketing tactics. The bill does not mention this. Another strategy pesticide companies use is to aggressively promote their products through representatives or dealers. They are often the last point of contact with farmers and are known to heavily influence pesticide use. The bill is surprisingly silent on this too. It briefly mentions these two related issues at the beginning whereas this important aspect deserves a separate chapter just like it is being done for the registration of pesticides. Advertisement and promotion if well regulated can limit pesticide misuse. Pesticides should be allowed to be sold or promoted directly to the consumer since they are deadly chemicals and not consumer products. Pesticides should therefore be regulated more like drugs which are not advertised and cannot be promoted directly to the consumer. This also means the bill should have provisions to ensure that the last point of contact to farmers can never be a company representative. And the most important thing is that the income of the pesticide company representative should be delinked from its sale. Companies should be told to follow a code of contact, a report of which should be considered to be available for audit. Next area is our agriculture extension system. There is huge gap in the transfer of correct information to the farmers especially to guide farmers about the use of pesticides at the local level. This gap is often exploited by pesticide companies through the extensive presence of a sales force and dealers at the local level. This leads to excessive and unwanted use of pesticides and irreversible harm to the ecosystem, natural resources, biodiversity, human health and the animal health. This is unacceptable. The agriculture extension system plays major role in limiting pesticide misuse but it seems like the bill is not giving due attention to this system. 
as the belief about managing pesticides this aspect deserves a separate section in the bill necessary provisions should be mentioned to ensure the agriculture extension system plays a very active role in prescribing advising and creating awareness about pesticide use the provisions should also direct how the extension system should be strengthened with the support from multiple modalities like including the krishi vigyan kendra agricultural universities indian council of agricultural research institutions and toll free helpline systems next important area is labeling and packaging labeling and packaging of pesticides is important to guide the end user usually a farmer in this case about what lies in the package and instructions on how to use handle and safely dispose the content and the package this is a critical aspect that the bill did not give necessary attention to the bill should include provisions that provide necessary directions to ensure labeling and the packaging is well regulated through the bill in line with the best global practices next factor that needs to be paid attention is personal protective equipments this otherwise called as ppe deaths from application of pesticides is a well known issue in india one solution is to ensure farmers wear ppe while spraying this is an important aspect to limit deaths and severe illness from acute toxicity the bill should therefore have necessary provisions in it it should aim to ensure that companies selling pesticides provide safety gear of appropriate quality along with pesticides the agriculture extension machinery should be accountable for creating awareness on overseeing the proper usage of ppes by farmers while applying pesticides particularly those that are hazardous because of acute toxicity in them next area is the governance mechanism the governance mechanisms proposed to execute the provisions of the bill must be more inclusive and the relationships among them must be clearly defined first there needs to be adequate representation of stakeholders and experts from agro ecology environment farmers civil society health and consumers in the central pesticide board as well as the registration committee this is not the case in the proposed bill alternatively there should be an introduction of an independent oversight committee to review the decisions of the registration committee second how the board and committee are linked would work together must be defined clearly in the bill third a better balance in the role and powers of states and the union governments needs to be attained states are proposed to have powers to ban a pesticide for up to an year a separate provision however mentions the union government would manage the pesticide industry taking away these powers from the states next one is who should be the prescriber of the toxic pesticides the bill includes an important aspect stating that extremely and highly hazardous pesticides considered class 1 pesticides by the who due to the acute toxicity are to be used only after prescription so who should be the prescriber and what should be the guiding conditions to allow the use of such pesticides has to be included the bill should also include this in the criteria to register any new pesticide wherein no such pesticide is registered as long as a safer alternative exists and the next thing is precautionary principles and the polluter pays principles missing the precautionary principle should be included in any bill that deals with hazardous chemicals especially if such chemicals are to be applied on food and feed crops the bill however does not mention this
the provisions related to registration in the bill must include it thereby ensuring that a pesticide with riskier unsafe profile despite having limited evidence should not be registered any pesticide banned in other countries due to acute or chronic toxicity should also be not be allowed in india or only have to be allowed after enough support from research studies comparing the socio economic status of our country pesticides with no assessment of long term safety on environmental impact should not be preferred for registration the polluter pays principle is also critical india has seen cases where pesticide manufacturing plants have severely damaged the health of the people and environment for example union carbide india limited before and after the bobal gas tragedy was responsible for long term toxicity in soil ground water and health in the nearby region it is critical that the bill includes the manufacturing aspects of managing pesticides the act should provide provisions for a robust grievance redressal system and compensation in addition to the above mentioned points penalties should also be in proportion to the sales of pesticides since a penalty of few lakh rupees may not be a big enough deterrent for big companies a database of pesticides should also be created at the taluk level let's come to the ban of 27 pesticides on may 14 draft notification was released seeking ban of 27 pesticides sales manufacture export and everything and the bill is so casual about the alternatives that are proposed it was like okay just use the alternatives instead of the chemical pesticides alternatives proposed for these pesticides without any details biological control is proposed as alternative for these chemicals but biological control is not well established system among farmers in our country it can only be done gradually farmers are not just used to it and also availability of quality biological control or so called alternatives should be ensured first if we take it for example there are lot of products in market claiming to be a bio rationals but when it is tested it is just the chemicals named as bio rationals so it should have paid enough attention and the bill has to be more practical about the matter after several representations from users and the manufacturers manufacturing and export was allowed which have saved 200 crores export which could have created bigger playground for china why so we must know the fact that india is the second largest pesticides manufacturer last year pesticides export accounted for 50% of total agrochemical export and also we must remember that the first one leading in the agrochemical manufacturing is china for india annual turnover of 43000 crore was obtained from the agrochemicals 20000 from the local market and 20000 from the export industry loss that is estimated was 9600 crore due to the ban of these 27 pesticides as the 70% of the commodity used pesticides are on the list it was again good decision to allow the export otherwise it would have benefited china a leading supplier already pet enough usage of pesticides are also different in india as nearly 70% of pesticides in india are insecticides in the remaining 12% are fungicides and 10% are herbicides whereas worldwide herbicides are most consumed so it is very critical that herbicides export plays major part in export economy of agrochemicals in the 27 banned pesticides 12 are insecticides 8 fungicides and 7 herbicides 
together it contains 134 formulations based on these chemicals used in 74 field and horticulture crops. These products goes out of the market in one stroke which ultimately reduces the choice for farmers. They will be forced to use the limited pesticides as there are no reliable alternatives. If just because one pesticide is banned in one country, it may not suit to Indian socio-economic ground realities. For instance, the pesticide Mangozeb, which is green labeled pesticide, banned in Saudi, extremely used in Latin America and African countries, which is also the biggest export item for India. Similarly, green labeled herbicide sulfosulfuran is in the list just because it is banned in Spain. Banning such pesticides in bulk would force India to become a net importer of them from a net exporter for the alternative chemicals. And also, we must see the perspective of economically viable application to small farmers. We must also consider the multiple uses of managing the vectors of viruses for both human and animals. Malathion, which is one of the generic pesticides and green labeled, is broad spectrum insecticide that is not only used for locust control but also recommended for mosquito management is also on the list. When we are looking at the seed sector, Therum, Delta Methrine and Carbon Dicin are the safest seed reserves to control seed and soil borne diseases and insects. Delta Methrine, the safest insect against soil borne insects through seed treatment of sorghum, sunflower, mustard and other vegetable seeds would cause serious problem. Chloripyrifos is in the ban list because it is added in the European Union's endocrine disruption screening program is not accepted by many research studies which concludes there are no potential to interact with endocrine system including estrogen, androgen and thyroid pathways. The ban was made on hazard basis but FAO and WHO's Kodak suggests the ban should be based on risk basis. Most of the pesticides falling under the proposed ban list are highly cost effective and affordable as compared to their so called alternatives. And also, majority of pesticides banned have been in use for long and no serious cause of resistance, resurgence or residue has been reported. So, the government's review is needed on domestic and export market. So, it is high time to review the proposed Pesticide Management Bill 2020 so that we can make it stronger and more viable to protect our ecology as well as our farmers. Thank you.